Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting exponential equation with i and e, Euler's number. We have e to the power i to the power x equals 1 and we're going to be solving for x values. Hopefully I made that clear. Now, to be able to solve this problem, first of all, let's observe a couple things. For example, e to the power something equals 1 means what? If you had an equation like e to the power n equals 1, you would probably think of 0, right? n equals 0 satisfies this equation. Are there any other solutions? Probably not, right? So in this case, can I safely assume that this whole thing here is going to be 0? So that means i to the power x equals 0. Let's see what that means. i to the power x equals 0. Now when you look at powers of i, obviously there are integer powers of i, there are rational powers of y, and then there are the irrational powers of y, which would pretty be, I think it will be pretty interesting. What is i to the power squared of 2, right? Well, we probably know i to the first is i, i to the second is i squared, which is negative 1, i to the third is negative i, and i to the fourth is 1, and then it's a cycle just going to repeat, right? Great, but when do you get 0? The answer is never, right? Well, here's the thing. You can never get 0 because x needs to approach negative infinity for you to be able to approach zero. But we're not talking about approaching, we're just talking about equalities here, equal sign, limits and equations are different, right? So we don't seem to have a solution then, do we? Well, there are no real solutions. So we're gonna be looking for complex solutions. And I, you're probably thinking, wouldn't this be an appropriate problem for A plus BI, the other channel that talks about complex numbers and all that stuff? Yes, but also people who follow this channel and who are not following A plus BI will also have a chance to see something like this. And hopefully you'll follow A plus BI as well. Anyways, let's see how we can solve this problem. A to the power I to the power X equals 1. Awesome. I think we've done a similar problem before with E to the E to the X or something like that. And if you haven't, we'll do it or you can stack up more e's anyways. So since i to the x equals zero is not gonna get us anywhere, let's go ahead and look at this differently. We hopefully know how to complexify one, right? Because one can be written as e to the power two pi and i. Where does that come from? From the argand plane, such a fancy word, right? For the coordinate plane. This is the real part, this is the imaginary part. Basically complex numbers can be written as ordered pairs, and one would be one comma zero, which will appear right here. And its distance from zero is just gonna be one unit. The angle it makes is zero radians or two pi radians or any multiple of two pi, which is represented by two pi n. Multiply by i, you get the polar form. Awesome. What does this give us? This gives us a very important equation. This guy equals this guy. And by the way, I added 2 pi and i, so we're good. I don't think we need to add another one. i to the x equals 2 pi and i. Awesome. You've got a couple of different ways to go about it. You can divide by i and you work with x minus 1, or you can just proceed as follows, like with this, and then uh, just solve for x. Okay? Let's do the second, or the latter. I'm going to replace i with its complex form or polar form again, it's going to be e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Remember that pi over 2 is the principal argument, and then you can add multiples of 2 pi. And then this will be raised to the power x. When we do, we're just going to multiply by x. That's going to be 2 pi and i. Wait a minute, how do we solve something like this? Here's the thing. We can go ahead and natural log both sides. Now, what does i to the x mean? You can also approach this problem a little differently by considering the fact that z to the w can actually be written as e to the power w ln z. A lot of times people are going to write log instead of ln because that's the complex logarithm, but I just use ln. Same idea. Now, we can go ahead and use this idea then, it's gonna become e to the power x times ln i. And then what is x ln i, or what is ln i? Well, since ln i can be written as ln 
e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, then this basically pretty much becomes the same thing. Make sense? But you can also approach it that way. So from here, we're going to go ahead and bring this down to the front, Proper properties of logarithms. So that's going to become e to the power ix times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Now this is i to the power x, remember? And this is equal to, well, that contains ix, 2 pi and i. So what we need to do now is use the complex logarithm. Obviously, at this point, you can use the polar form to write this as cosine blah, blah, blah. But you'll see in a little bit uh, what Wolfram Alpha gives us for this problem, right? So let's go ahead and natural log both sides. We're going to get ix times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. If you don't want to deal with this, you can just set k equal to 0. Be done with it. And then ln 2 pi and i. Great. Remember, we're solving for x. We don't really care about this. Except, we kind of have to figure out the ln of i one more time, right? So let's go ahead and do that. ix multiply by pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. And then I'm going to separate it into ln 2 pi n plus ln i, which can be written as e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2m pi. And that will be it, right? Let's go ahead and move this over here so we can fit it. Oops, that didn't work. Let's go ahead and move this here. Oops, I kind of broke it. 2 pi, 2 m pi, and that's pi over 2. And this is supposed to be e to the power i. Okay, here we go. So that's all the pieces. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, I can move this to the front. That's going to give me ln e, which is 1, so that's good. That's going to give me ix times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k equals ln 2 pi n, by the way, n is an integer, did I forget to say that, plus i times pi over 2 plus 2 n pi. And then finally, you can divide both sides by i times this and get the x by itself. But let me tell you something. For simplicity's sake, oh, by the way, that's supposed to be an m, we have a lot of integers in this equation. Let's go ahead and replace k, n, and m all with 0. Actually, we can't do that. So let's just go ahead and replace some of these with 0. I guess I messed up the eraser. So how about k equals m equals 0 and n equals 1. So that's going to give us something much simpler. At least it's going to look nicer. We're going to get ix pi over 2 equals ln 2 pi plus i times pi over 3. You see how nice that is? Let's just focus on this. The rest is this, uh, very similar. So we're going to go ahead and first take care of the i. I'd probably just multiply both sides by negative i because that will get rid of the i. i times negative i is 1. So we can forget about it. And then divide both sides by pi over 2. But let's go ahead and distribute the i first. This is going to give us i times negative i again, which is pi over 2, minus i times ln 2 pi. And finally, I'm going to divide everything by pi over 2. x is going to be 1 minus ln 2 pi over pi over 2, which is going to give me 2 ln 2 pi over pi. And then there's going to be an i here. And that should be the answer, in my opinion, at least one of the solutions. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what Wolfram Alpha gave us. And I guess I didn't do it. But anyways, I could probably tell you what Wolfram Alpha he gave us when we plug in something like this. It gave us something like e to the power cosine pi x over 2 multiplied by cosine of sine of pi x over 2, so on and so forth. Or x could be something like approximately 0 0.63662 multiplied by 6.2832, which is 2 pi n sub 2, i log or ln 2 pi n1 and... That's pretty much it. N sub 1 and N sub 2 are integers. And that's what I got from, from Alpha. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.